Hello and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, welcome and if you've been here before, I'm glad you're back. Today's video is going to be all about removing enhancements. Well, soakable enf enhancements. So I um, saw this question asked everywhere in the groups lately in the last few months actually uh people don't know how to remove their enhancements and um, they needed a bit of help and guidance towards that so i thought i'm gonna do a video so you know you can refer back to it if you need it or just maybe teach you how to do it yeah there's a video that's gonna be on youtube forever so there you go you're welcome <laughs> Um, first of all, you need to keep in mind that this method with soaking it in acetone that I'm going to show you today is going to work only on things that you, that that's, it says on the box, on the bottle, on the whatever you want to call it, that it can be soaked off. Because hard gel, for instance, you're not going to be able to soak it off. So you're going to stay there for three days in acetone and it's not going to touch it in any way. Uh, however, you can file it off. So, you know, that works. But this is going to work on um, the builder gel in a bottle that is soakable. Obviously, it has to say on it that it's soakable. Um, you can find some builder gel in pots as well that you know they, it's soft gel so it's gonna soak and then you have uh, gel polish you have acrylic you have um, dip nails that you can remove like this so all kinds of things you can remove uh, and even as a client you could remove these at home with some acetone and you know a few of the things that I'm gonna show you today um, so I had these nails on now for about two weeks and they are press-ons but I applied them with acrylic because uh, they are quite flat and they're quite long so because I'm heavy-handed I decided to apply some acrylic and see how they hold on I am quite happy for two weeks you know they held on quite nicely but now I can see this huge gap here and it really annoys me uh, because they are very thick here although I try to thin them out they're still quite thick there and um, yeah they need to come off because it I can see some lifting somewhere they don't actually budge they don't move at all but I see lifting and it really bothers me and plus they hurt because I'm heavy handed and I, I hit them on things, I uh, you know open cupboard doors the way I shouldn't open cupboard doors and they start to be painful. So they need to go away. <laughs> and plus, I don't know, I just, yeah, I'm bored. <laughs> I need something new. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you how to make your life a bit easier and um, quicker to have like a quick removal process. I know that usually in uh, salons you can find little pots that you put your hands in, you pour acetone and you leave them there, but I find that being very, very wasteful with the acetone in my opinion, unless you have, I don't know, three soaks a day, five soaks a day, it's just not worth it. And plus it's not really nice to reuse that acetone anyway, I mean, I don't know, it's just full of bits. Ugh. Um, but uh, yeah, I, my method, I, I feel like, you know, it's gonna work for everyone, uh, it's not gonna cost you a lot, so mm, we'll see. <laughs> So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some, a pair of nippers that are quite old and they were quite cheap when I bought them so you know I didn't expect them to last forever and I'm gonna remove the length off of these because you can't soak them like this but what's the point like you you're just wasting your resources a lot so um, there is something very very important in how you hold your nippers you do not want to go like this or even like this because that crack might go down inside the nail and might actually cause a lot of damage and pain. So what you want to do is turn your nippers and then put it on a diagonal and apply some pressure. Make sure you're not as cl very, very close to the skin, so don't go here. You go up here somewhere 
and then just put some pressure and then you go on the other side in the same angle and put some more pressure it's a weird angle try to film as well <laughs> This is a bit of a struggle all the time. There you go. And now you can see nothing is, it, it didn't reach my natural nail, it didn't reach my skin. You still have some free edge there. And I would recommend you can just like nip the edges, the little points there. And um, then you can just keep on going. You can leave that like that. The next step that you need to do is to remove some of the shine off um, and even some of the bulk if you have an e-file that's gonna really help out. If not, I highly recommend the Ink London uh, files. I would go in with maybe an 100 if you want to remove a bit of the bulk quickly. Just be very, very careful to not touch the natural nail. So make sure you don't go as far as that. Make sure you leave some product there. Um, I prefer to use my e-file because, well, I have it and it's easier. And uh, the one that I'm using is the Ink London one. Uh, this is a Cyan something, Cyan K38. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, and it goes up to 30,000 uh, rotations per minute. Uh, it's lightweight, it doesn't vibrate. I um, probably charge it once a month, it's on batteries. You can like clip it and take it and do a pedicure, come back, you know. And then it comes with this like really nifty stand, <laughs> which to be honest, it's probably the best thing ever because it's not big, it, the file doesn't move even if you shake it. Not even like the this uh, hand piece doesn't move around. I don't know, it's, I find it amazing. So I usually go in with that and I like to use the um, ceramic safety bit. This is the C2 and you just pop that one in, you turn and that's ready to go. And also I tend to go up to maybe 25,000 rotations per minute when I remove stuff. Uh, but again, I do recommend to have a training when you work with the, an e-file because it can be very, very dangerous and you don't want to have any accidents. And also practice on yourself just so you know what means when the client says it's hot, what uh, your limits are. And yeah, I mean, practice on yourself because practice makes perfect. Also, the next thing you will need, definitely, even though you use a hand file or an e-file or anything, you'll need a mask. Make sure you get the mask. And then I also have, <laughs> I'm gonna show you what's underneath this, <laughs> a little vent here. So I usually use my, uh, my vent and, um, just because, you know, it gets rid of some of the dust. It doesn't get rid of all the dust. I'm going to try to film as much as I can, but it might not be able to because the dust might get on the camera and that's just going to be awful. But um, yeah, I'm going to show you how I remove them and, you know.
I also completely forgot to say this, but I do recommend to wear safety glasses as well. I can't wear them because most of the time I'm wearing my own glasses so I can actually see. I do wear them sometimes when I have contact lenses, but yeah, I would recommend safety glasses because you don't want anything in your eyes and it does hurt if something gets in it. And you could actually, you know, like have real damage from it. So yeah, safety glasses. I know they're inc an inconvenience, same as the mask is, but trust me, long run, they are worth it. So here they all are. Um, I went ahead and thinned them out a little bit off camera just because I couldn't see and I didn't trust myself with such a distance in the middle of the table kind of thing. What I recommend when you're filing them off is to try to keep them as even as possible. So don't go dipping in one side and not do the other side. Try to do them as even as possible. So move your file a lot because that's gonna minimize the heat. And um, yeah, make sure you do it evenly. So now they're all ready. Um, you can see that there was some lifting in some areas, as I said. I knew there's gonna be a bit of lifting and we probably caught it on time. It's probably because I made it a bit too bulky on the sides here, but that's my mistake. So, you know, it's not even the product, it's, it's me, it's my fault. Um, because I couldn't see anything underneath that tip, so I just kind of pushed it down and hoped for the best. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I'm still happy with how long they lasted, so yeah. That's fine. So now the part that everyone was waiting for. Um, I do recommend doing this prep because to be honest, this is gonna probably half your time or even less when it comes to soaking because soaking can take a really long time. So what I'm using to soak is the gel polish remover from Ink London. I really love this product because it has a nice smell. <laughs> I know I'm so, you know, superficial, <laughs> but I really like the smell of it. And um, it's like a fruity smell, I don't know, I just, oh. um, but it, it works really well as well. I recommend having at least 90% acetone for this. Uh, don't use the nail polish remover that you find in the shops that says no acetone because that's never gonna work. And how I use it, because I'm not gonna use it from the huge bottle that I just showed you, I usually pu put it in their little pump bottles. Um, they are really amazing. I have them for every single liquid that I use. And you can buy them in like uh, bulk, like, you know, buy six or 12. I don't even know how many they sell and like the biggest, uh, the biggest number. But anyway, you buy those, you put it in, they are acetone resistant, they're alcohol resistant, they're really, really nice and you don't, you know, use the huge bottle. Um, next thing that I use is cotton pads and I'm gonna cut these into like little triangles. Actually, I'm just gonna do it quickly. To just... Know about that size. Just to make sure we have enough space to cover every single nail. So, you know, you do that. And then I have some foils here um, and some clamps. You can use these clamps without the foils. You can use the foils without the clamps. I prefer to use both of them because you put the foil on, you put the clamp on top of it, yeah, and it keeps it in place so that, especially on clients, um, when they go to reach for their phone, to scratch their head, to, I don't know, uh, take their hair off of their face or something, the little things don't move and they actually stay in place exactly on top of your nail, exactly where you want it. So I prefer the clips as well. You can find these probably on Amazon. I think I might have got them from Wish many years ago and I had them and I never had any issues with them. So yeah. And then also what I like to do, and I lost it, um, is to apply this around the cuticle area with a little wooden cuticle pusher, orange stick, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because these I use them once and then I throw them away so you know there's no uh, cross-contamination 
I actually don't have a spatula, which I know is really bad of me, but you know. Um, but yeah, you, you'll you'll see what I mean in a second. So first off, as I said, a bit of cuticle cream. I usually put it on my glove. You know, this is not gonna harm you. You can actually have skin contact with this, so I I don't mind putting it on my skin. Um, so you put a bit of uh, it on your glove and then you just go around everywhere where you want to protect. Um, I would go around underneath the nail as well because why not? <laughs> Just because I, I don't want my clients to have very, very dry skin at the end. I will oil it anyway at the end, but I still feel like they need some extra protection and this is not going to do any harm. So put some underneath, put some on the sides and there you go. It's just a little bit of protection as I said. And then next step, you take your cotton wool, you press on the pump thingy. You have some acetone, put it on top, make sure it fits the whole nail. And then foil, you take it like this, you bend it on the top. God, it looks like I don't even know what I'm doing, doesn't it? <laughs> it's so weird to film this. <laughs> and then making sure you keep that in there, you're gonna press on the sides, yeah, to bend it, and then you bring this on the top, and then this on the top. So this way you have a nice little package um, that you're not gonna actually, it, it's basically not gonna come undone, but uh, it's not gonna leak anywhere or anything like that. And then you go in with that clamp and that holds it in place. That makes sure that the heat stays in there as well. So um, yeah, you just like, let them soak and obviously you do the rest of them and uh, that's it. Now we just wait, um, I would say about five to ten minutes, depends on what you have on, you know, with gel polish is gonna soak quicker, um, but yeah, just just wait, that, that's all you have to do. <laughs> so I thought I'm gonna show you how to tell if your nail is ready or not. So this nail should not be ready in, at all, and you can see it's sticky, but it's not ready. I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna try to scrape it and something does come off but it's not it's not that great which means that this nail needs to stay a bit longer in that acetone if you go harder you risk the chance of actually damaging your nail so don't do that <laughs> just try to remove as much of the loose um, acrylic as you can you can even file it at this point then reapply some acetone to your uh, cotton pad pop it on the nail pop this back in fold it really neat as you did before and then pop your thing on top and leave it another I would leave this one now until I finish these and then I'll come back to this one because this one's gonna take again longer because you expose it to air so you know it, that acetone inside dried. So I think we waited long enough to check on one of these. I've waited about seven minutes I would say 
and yep I'm not putting any pressure but you can see that product is coming off really nice really easy again I'm not putting any pressure and I'm basically already touching the natural nail this is just where the um, the free edges <laughs> I couldn't talk there <laughs> But um, yeah, I would say to leave this a little bit longer in there just to make sure that this comes off nicely and I don't have to like pull it off. And again, I'm just gonna pop that back in and clamp it on. And I'm gonna do the same with the rest just to take some of that thickness off. So it's been another five minutes, let's say. Um, also, I didn't mention, but I did apply more acetone as I uh, put these back. So, you know, because it kind of dries out whilst you leave it. And there you go. We've got that free edge off. And now it's just a little bit at the tip here. By the way, I'm not applying any kind of pressure. I am kind of leaving the tool to do the thing for me so I know it looks on camera that I'm applying pressure but I'm not I really am not next step you can take a file and just buff the rest of the acrylic or the product off uh, I like to do this very gently make sure to uh, file only on top of product and not on the actual natural nail because that's just gonna thin it out and just make sure that you know there's not a, a lot of thickness left there if there is go back under the foil and just repeat the whole step again because you don't want that I would say that's nice and clean and in my opinion that's good enough because I'm lazy and I don't want to go back under the foil but yeah, that's not a lot of thickness there, that's just my natural nail, so that one's done. I'm gonna obviously clean it up a little bit, but uh, right now that's good enough and we're gonna move on to the next. So what I would do next is I would push the cuticles just gently and then scrape off anything that's uh, left around them. I would usually use the e-file for this as well to just have nice cuticles and then depending on how you want your um, basically why you you know remove them if you want to reapply or not um, I would prep the nail or I would buff it to a shine so I'm not gonna buff it to a shine today because I am gonna reapply some nails because I can't stay without nails because I like them <laughs> but um, if I were to buff them to a shine though 
I would first go in with this is a, a used one because uh, this is mine <laughs> but I would go with the Ink London buffer and then this is the 240 buffer and then I would go first with the 400 side of this buffer and then with the 6000 side of this buffer so this would make them shiny as if you would have a top coat on uh, and it's gonna make them look beautiful this one's a bit better as well because this one's mine as well because <laughs> I don't use my files once and throw them away because they're mine so there's no cross-contamination with you know anything else there but um, yeah that's just how I would do it and after that, apply some cuticle oil and uh, you're done. So they are nicely filed and uh, the cuticles are nicely cleaned. So now I'm just gonna clean them up with some cleanser to remove some of the dust. And I thought I could at least apply some oil just to, you know, kind of make them look nice for you. Um, on camera, I'm gonna use the peach cuticle oil from Glitter Bells. I really like this oil. Ink have, has some nice ones as well, but uh, I don't know, this was on hand. <laughs> and I mean on hand, I meant on the table. It was just there, so I thought I'm just gonna apply that quickly. By the way, I don't know if you, men uh, if you noticed, I didn't mention it, but the skin is not dry at all because we applied that cream uh, before we applied the acetone. The nails, yes, they were dry, but the skin, not even underneath, you can see that's just dust. That's not dryness, which is great. So uh, try that method if you didn't until now and let me know what you thought. So just rub that oil in and then we're done. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, if you did, you know, give it a like if you want. If you want to see more of these, uh, tell me down below because I can do more videos like this where I show you some of the basics. Um, also, you know, if you want to see any more things that I post, uh, you can always subscribe to my channel. Just saying. <laughs> and um, basically, I will see you in the ne next one. Okay, bye!